Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're gonna have ourselves a 1v1 on Road to Kharkov. Our heroes today are going to be Fortune, playing as the OKW in the pink or purple trunks, depending on your preference. And his opponent in the blue is going to be Mr. DFSCRO. The Fresco? The Fuscro? Probably just call him Crow. Uh, playing as the Soviets in the blue. Now, right off the bat, we saw that Mr. Crow got himself a bit of a disadvantage there. He, uh, I guess maybe it was AFK, or the game took a little bit longer to load, but if you notice the timer, we were already 40 seconds into the game, and he had not yet moved his combat engineer squad, which, you know... It's not, you know, the end of the world, but it does, you know, put you slightly at a disadvantage. I mean, we can see here that Fortune's already captured three things on the field, whilst the combat engineers were only able to capture one. So, yeah, puts him a little bit behind, but shouldn't be the end of the world. I don't think that's going to be really the deciding factor here. So, hopefully, it'll still lead to a pretty cool game. So, Mr. Crow, for his part, just getting himself uh, conscripts, conscripts, and more conscripts. Going to be opening up with three. Fortune went for a Volksgrenadier squad and a Kubelwagen. We have seen the Kubelwagen being put into good effect, you know, past few games. So, yeah, we're going to see it be the MG, essentially. So, that is one of the cool things about it, you know. It, uh, it gives you that ability to hold off masses of infantry and suppress and such. Without having to go for, say, the fortification doctrine and such. Uh, does he even have any doctrine that has that? Mm, no, actually. Yeah, so. Fortune not actually taking one doctrine that has the MG34. So, yeah, really his only ability to suppress is the Kubelwagen, which is why I suppose he integrates it into his build order. So, anyways. South side, we do see the engagement going on. Kubelwagen getting a suppression going on the conscript squad, forcing it to crawl. The other squad trying to get closing the distance. Get suppressed itself as the storm pioneers try to engage, but we have a lot of troops down south. That is three conscripts and a combat engineer against a lone Kubelwagen with the storm pioneer squad. Kubelwagen may actually be going down here as the conscripts do get themselves very close in range. They are going to be able to get some damage in there, but it manages to suppress the squad. And a Volksgrenadier comes up to help. Storm Pioneers in the center, down to two men, getting shot in all directions by the Conscripts. Gonna be going down if they don't retreat. It looks like Fortune may be losing his first squad right here. I don't think... Oh, it's very close. Can he actually make it out of there? Shots continue to fly from the Conscripts. Can the Storm Pio make it out of there? The Kubelwagen has managed to get a pin down on the other Conscript squad, allowing the Storm Pios a window of opportunity to get out of there. And they barely make it out of there alive. Volksgrenadier squad still in the engagement, moves itself inside the shack. It does manage to force away a conscript squad down to one man, but it is now kind of surrounded here as we have two conscript squads pushing forward and a combat engineer squad engaging. The combat engineers are going for the flamethrower, but they're barely doing it right now, so it's not going to pop rather quickly, so he has some time. Fortune did decide to spend the resources to get the battle group headquarters, so he is going to be utilizing a very slow, well, not slow, but low amount of infantry for now. Conscripts popping out of the house. They are now in the retreat path of the Volksgrenadier squad. So while Fortune managed to keep his pios alive, this Volksgrenadier squad is a goner. Not even going to be popping out of the house. Combat engineers igniting them inside. And Fortune has lost the unit very early on. Mr. Fusco, uh, the Frisco. <laughs> going for even more conscripts. Five conscripts in total now on the field. We'll see if he continues for more. No, it's actually going to go for the field infirmary, so that's pretty cool. Going to be able to get those conscripts up and running at full strength, which should be rather strong. And the Kuvulwagen makes its appearance once again, trying to get some shots into the center. Do remember, of course, that the suppression ability does take a while to kick in, so the initial shot's not really that effective. Kuvulwagen is going to be pushing around the conscript squad as we have Storm Pios pushing forward and coming up to help. Storm Pio is in position to be able to get some kills on the Conscript Squad, but the Conscript Squad is forced to retreat as it got pushed around a little bit too aggressively there by the Kubelwagen. Combat Engineers on the uh, right-hand side going for the munitions, getting themselves uh, 
not killed, but losing one of their members and forced to retreat as the Storm Pios are going to try to recover some territory. Down south, Folks Grenadier Squad has gone for a Shrek. That is a very early Shrek, and I don't really see a reason why Fortune should have gone for that. Removes, uh, well, 25%. Of the Volksgrenadiers. Well, not actually 25, 20, right? Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was 4 for some reason. 20% of the uh, anti infantry capabilities, pretty much. I mean, yeah, Shrek can, every once in a while, hit an infantry and kill it, which is kind of cool, but for the most part, it's kind of useless. You see here, three shots and nothing. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why he got it at this point. I mean, we know that he went for a lot of conscripts, so it makes it kind of hard for tech to come out, so, yeah. I guess maybe he hasn't gotten the full count of how many conscripts there are. Kumblagen in the center, getting Urad here by the conscripts. They get an 80 grenade off on its face, getting its engine damage, and it's down to about 25% strength. Trying to move itself around, trying to get enough of, you know, damage and interference here on the conscript squad to take it out. The conscripts are focusing fire now on the Kumblagen. The Kumblagen now opening up as Storm Pios get on top of it. Can the conscripts finish it off before they get themselves killed? Well, looks like that's not going to happen as the conscript squad down to one man forced to retreat. Can it actually make it out of there? Well, we do have a Volkswagen Deer Squad that went down and, in fact, ended up giving a Shrek to the Conscript. That is fucking horrible here for Fortune. Uras forward, gonna be catching that cool wagon out on the field. Storm Pioneers trying as much as they can to stop it, but Fortune's just putting a sad face, and down it goes. That actually may be game. Jeez. Well, let's see if Fortune can recover from this. Losing two Volkswagen Deer Squads. Pretty much before, yeah, before the 10 minute mark and a cool wagon and giving the enemy a Shrek. That is not an easy position to come back from. A lot, a lot of people would actually just throw in the towel at that point. Storm Pios trying as best they can against that conscript squad with the stolen Shrek. Not managing to do too much. We do have an infantry support gun on the field for fortune. Should be pretty good. Should help out against the, uh. The conscripts, it is again another means of suppression, so that's always nice, but geez, I mean, Fortune really only has four units on the field. I mean, it's actually kind of, I mean, no, even then, I mean, yeah, it's kind of lucky, I suppose, for him that he doesn't have any more guys. Grenade going off on the combat engineers, Molotov going off on the Volks. Neither losing anything, both forced to retreat, combat engineers catching a Volks on the retreat. But that is about it. Storm piles and Volks moving around in the center. Infantry support gun now set up a little bit further front to the line. Should be able to help out against these conscripts. Conscripts taking some shots. Nothing actually getting hit, so suppression effects are not, well, in effect. But they are pretty clumped up now, so the infantry support gun could actually be the, gr the great stabilizer here. Nope, Cosgrip Spot's pushing forward, managing to dodge that incoming shot. They managed to stop themselves once again. Gonna get some focus fire here on the Storm Pyre. Storm Pyre's down to one man. Can they actually pick up the kill? Well, Molotov flies. The infantry support gun whiffs completely. Hasn't done anything so far. And the Storm Pyre squad barely makes it out of there. Both Square Deer Squad vaults itself over the fence to get a little bit of light cover here as the infantry support gun is now being assaulted here by the Conscripts. The Conscripts push forward and Fortune is just being manhandled right here. Shuad Panzer Headquarters going down for Fortune. He even puts it down back at base, so the uh, gun on top of it isn't really even going to help him in any way. I mean, he could have really set it up somewhere around here, at least behind this big, you know, hedge. And at least cover this point. Maybe this point as well, since he's been pretty defensive. But, I mean, I guess that's what he needed to do. Back at the War for getting built, we do see that Mr. Crow has gone for the Lend Lease Tactics, which means... Probably not going to be seeing any tech. I mean, he has access to a machine gun if needed to. Doesn't get access to an AT gun, but of course he does get access to the Sherman. So, the yeah, unfortunately Sherman, which... Pretty powerful. Volks Grenadiers trying to push back, managing to recover some territory as conscripts just put themselves in heavy cover. Volks are out in the open. They're trying, they're hoping that with the support of the infantry support gun, they uh, can win this engagement. But the conscripts decide to retreat. Thing. I guess uh, Mr. Crow didn't want to waste any uh, manpower. Good work, comrades. This now belongs to Combat us. Engineer Squad, far left hand side, just hold up inside that shack, making sure it can spot and potentially fend off anything it sees there. Volkskren Engineer Squad retreating, another Volkskren, and the uh, Storm Pyos getting right on top of that Shrek Squad. Shrek Squad forced to retreat. 
Takes a little bit of damage, but it'll be fine. Shots fly, getting some hits there on the barrels and the house. And Fortune slowly, very slowly, trying to recover some territory. Second combat engineer squad with flamethrowers on the right-hand side. So, Mr. Crow utilizing those as basically uh, <laughs> turrets almost. Storm Pyro is getting right on top of the combat engineers. They will win that engagement if the combat engineers don't retreat. Down to two men, down to one. Will it go down? Yes, it will go down. Storm Pyos do the damage, and the flamethrower actually goes down. They can't? Huh. No. Oh, okay, that's why. No, they can, They still can. Uh, yeah, they have a sweeper, but they could actually pick up that flamethrower if they wanted to, but I mean, not really going to do too much. Ooh, interesting. Oversoldat then coming down for fortune. Huh. How do I feel about that? I mean, that's fine. He doesn't have a lot of fuel because he doesn't have a lot of territory. So I guess he really can't do anything, you know, as far as vehicle goes. Could go for a Lux. There's a lot of infantry on the field, but there is that Shrek, which is going to make it much more difficult for the Lux. But, I mean, he has the fuel for that. Panzer IV and, of course, the Panther are a long ways away. So if he wanted to have something to try to turn it around, maybe that would be it. But I don't feel that even that would really do that well. Oh, well, let's see what happens. So, Oberzoldat is now on the field. They do, of course, have access to those LMGs, or, well, the LMG. Um, so, they're going to get it upgraded now. Combat engineers inside this house. They pop out as Volksgrenadiers getting some shots at range. But, uh, it's going to take a little bit. Well, sorry. Wow. <laughs> I got completely confused. Damn it. I got to stop looking at text messages when I'm casting. So unprofessional. Folks here at your squad did pick up the flamethrower. The flamethrower will, uh, like I said, help him out a little bit. Actually, it should help him out a lot, especially against all these uh, all these conscripts. But whether it'll be the uh, the difference, what he needs, I don't know. Rocket and Warfer burning up in a ball of flaming fire. Conscript squad forced to retreat after the Molotov, so they're not able to steal it. Second conscript squad takes a lot of damage to the Obersoldat, and the Obersoldat then... Pretty good choice. I mean, yeah, I mean, that LMG and such. Pretty strong units. Kind of what he needs to be able to fight all these conscripts, but we do have guards on the field now. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, why, why do we have guards? Yeah, because of the half-track. You have the uh, the M5 half-track assault group. These are guards, but they don't have uh, PTRS rifles. These guys have uh, PPSHs. Let's see if we can actually see them right there. Yeah. You notice? One, two, three, four. Do they all have PPSHs? Huh. I thought it was kind of like a... Conscript Assault Package, but no, it looks like they all have. have uh, something died. A Conscript Squad, it looks like. Lux capturing a Combat Engineer Squad. Both Combat Engineers have died for Mr. Crow, so Fortune actually turning it around quite uh, quite successfully. Not that bad. It gets himself another Flamethrower, so both Flamethrowers have been acquired by Fortune. So his Volksgrenadiers have that. Still, the Shrek squad is on the field, so that Lux needs to be careful, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if there's really a reason to get the Shreks on the Volks Grenadiers, regardless of what you're doing, let me know. Because <laughs> I don't see it. Like, for me, whenever you get the Shrek before a vehicle is on the field, it just seems like a waste to me. It's kind of like getting a pack gun, you know, preemptively, but, you know, like... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I don't like just getting those because you feel that, like, something might be coming. It's kind of like either you scout and uh, and you know that there's something coming or you wait. <laughs> Smoke getting popped by the Obersoldat then as the half-track has uh, been <laughs> garrisoned by two conscript squads, not one. Why? I don't actually know why two of them are inside, although, I mean, that's kind of a cool thing that you could do. It's just... Move it forward and pop a conscript squad outside, which uh, gives you a lot of shock value. Conscripts behind the line. They're going for the infantry support gun. The Lux catching them. The conscripts still uraing, and they're going to get an 18 grenade off on that uh, half track. Not half track. On the uh, Lux. The half track pushing forward. Not managing to do too much as we see that a uh, shoe minefield was going down. Does not actually finish the uh, build, so unfortunately that doesn't help. Uh, aha! So, uh, yeah, I was right in my thinking that they don't all have PPS Ages. It's four PPS Ages, and you can see the other two guys with the rifles. 
Aftrak coming up behind for a strike on the Lux. The Lux focusing right now on the infantry manages to take out the guard squad. The Rakuten and Warfers just being made out of paper, unable to really do too much. The Lux now focusing on the half track, maybe able to take it down before the Shrek flies in its direction. There goes the half track, but the conscripts pop out. The Lux will be going down here to the Shrek. There it goes. And the Rakuten and Warfare is stolen. Well, not stolen, but it goes down as well. So it may actually be stolen. Yeah, it's going to be stolen. Pretty much what you would expect. And, uh, jeez. Crow taking severe losses here. He's actually down to three conscript squad only. And, of course, the uh, Rakuten and Warfare that he just stole. No additional tech. But, like I said, I don't think he's going to be teching. I mean, there's no reason for him to tech. He can just rely on those Colin Shermans. He has a lot of fuel already saved up, a lot of manpower already saved up, which technically could have been utilizing in other fashion. At the very least, you know, building some caches like on this at this point just to use that manpower since you're not using it right now. And, it's, and you have to wait for the command points. You know, may as well use those resources. But at the same time, it's, you know, quite fine. It's like, okay, well. I still have most of the map, and I have a massive amount of resources incoming. I mean, that's 39 fuel against 4 fuel for Fortune. So even though he's not utilizing that manpower, it's just really not going to hurt him that much. Could use it right now simply to be able to um, to field more conscripts. But, I mean, let's see. It's 3, is that 700? Yeah, I mean, he could spare, spare a little bit. I mean, realistically, he can only field 3. Yeah. It's going to take a while to get there, so he's going to have resources to spare. So, yeah, at the very least, you know, get another conscript squad or something like that. But, well, it looks like for now, Mr. Crow is going to be conceding a little bit of territory. Give him Fortune a little bit of a respite here and allow him to come back. Uh, Fortune does get himself two Rakuten Warfers in total. Does have that infantry support gun, the Oversoldat, and Volk's Storm Pyo. So, after those initial losses, he has been doing a pretty good job of keeping his troops. The, uh, the Lux, of course, was the... Uh, exception there but it went down in a blaze of glory and ended up killing both the half track and the guard squad that came with it so that's you know it's not a bad trade at all and uh and yeah it, it did its job it thinned out the herd it helped in killing off a uh, a combat engineer squad so yeah i mean actually that lux was just fine Ooh, that is a who does that Oh, it's these guys. Booby trap point. Nice. So the other Latins will be trapping this point, which means that whenever a squad comes in, they will uh, explode. <laughs> oh, nice hit there by the infantry support gun. Conscript squad pushing forward. They're going to crawl into range. Oh, nice hit there by the booby trap. Almost kills off the conscript squad, but it manages to stay alive with one man. Storm piles up in the north, taking a lot of damage there by the conscripts. Uh, grenade. Does go off as that's one of the things that I have been told. The uh, the storm pyos, if you didn't know, they actually have a grenade of their own. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> you very rarely see it, and we just saw it right now, which is kind of cool. Ah, there we go. There's the uh, the first uh, M4C Sherman, and there goes the second, and then he's gonna have a third. And yeah, that's why I was saying like he's still gonna have like 300 extra manpower, so. He could build another conscript squad, which he is actually. He's already building two because, yeah, he had a lot. He, he didn't need to wait. That's my point. He could have been utilizing those resources a little bit more before and still have enough for when the uh, Sherman production kicked in. Um, where are they? Haha. Ha, ha. Yeah, like if you notice, they have a concussive grenade. Maybe staggered and slowed down for a period. So, yeah, they get that at Veteran C3. Aha, unlocks the concussive grenade veteran ability. You don't see it used that often. Pretty much the first time I've catched it being used, but there you go. Your storm pyos, if they bet up, they actually get a concussive grenade. It's not I don't I'm not sure if it does any damage at all, but you know, the idea for it is to stun actually. So Fortune down to 213 points. Uh Mr. Crow is down to 267. So both players getting well, actually, I guess Crow technically is still above that halfway point. But getting rather low in those victory points, so it's, you know, still anybody's game. It's a 50, well, a little bit more, obviously. Uh, uh, but yeah, like about 50 point difference. Uh, so that can really swing one way or another very quickly. But still, as much as Fortune has managed to recover, and he has, well, he does have three Wreck of the Warfers on the field, but this Wreck of the Warfers seems to be getting spotted. Yeah, there it goes, and it's retreat to get the hell out of the way. Uh, Conscript pushing forward to the north. 
going to be recovering some territory and making sure those resources do not fall into Fortune's hands. Fortune going to be getting more oversold out there as his fuel is still relatively low. He's getting close to be able to call in something, but we now have three. Count him three. Yes. One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. Mr. Sherman said, now they're pushing. Here comes the Sherman push. No, never, never mind. They push a little bit forward, but the thing is that Crow hasn't actually revealed his hand just yet, so I don't think Fortune is actually aware that there are currently three Shermans on the field that he has to fight. I'm pretty sure he's expecting something of that effect. I don't think there's anything that tells him that it's the... Um... No, no, yeah. He should know, of course. I mean, obviously... Depends on the player, but I mean, at this level of play, I'm pretty sure he knows that Mr. Crow has the lend lease because he saw the half track and the guards. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's expecting those Shermans. Shermans now moving up altogether, gonna be catching the Obersal that then up in the north. Bit of a lackluster assault there as they're just shooting all over the place and not actually targeting the right troops. But one Rakuten Warfare did go down. We do still have two Rakuten Warfers on the field. Infantry support gun around, but the Rakuten Warfers are nowhere to be seen. Where the hell are they? The M4C Sherman's doing some damage in the center. They're not that great, apparently, against infantry, as you can tell. I guess, you know, if you compare them to the standard Sherman with his explosive rounds, yeah, they're not quite there. Fourth Sherman now on the field. As we see, Kroos just push forward. The Rocket and Warfare's trying as best they can to engage. One Rocket and Warfare's currently retreating. One in base, taking some shots. Main gun destroyed on one of the Shermans. Can it actually finish it off? Well, it does have the main gun destroyed, so it could be... No, it is going to focus down on that Sherman. Oh, they're not going to be able to take it off. And down goes the Rocket and Warfare. Rocket and Warfare. Pretty uh, fragile. No Shreks equipped on the Volks Grenadiers at this point. They're all moving away. The Obersoldaten don't really have much that they can do. So the Shermans are just sitting there in the base. You do see the Schwerer Panzer headquarters getting repaired by the Storm Pyos. Down was one of the Shermans. Second Sherman with his main gun destroyed did move out of the way, but the Schwerer Panzer headquarters will be going down, so not even going to be able to feel the Panther. The Battle Group headquarters is probably the next target. The Storm Pyos retreating. Oh, getting eliminated in one nice shot there by the Sherman. Folks Grenadiers just pushing forward, but, I mean, looks like they're going for the Rocket. The Warfare, that's just going to get themselves killed. Now they retreat, and they are at the mercy there of the Shermans. Down south, we see troops moving around for fortunes, just going behind the lines to cap. But that Volkscare Deer Squad with the flamethrower is pretty dead, actually. Well, it's hiding there. Still alive. <laughs> so there's that. Yak Panzer would be a good option here, but it does not look like Fortune has the resources. It looks like he's waiting for it. Uh, yeah, so Fortune gonna be trying to build a Yak Panzer to try to combat these uh, Shermans, but it's too little too late. He's not gonna be able to build it in time. Does he lose the resources if the building go down? Does, do they uh, refund? Let's take a look. They refund, okay. So at least he doesn't lose that, but yeah, the Battle Group Headquarters is down which means he doesn't have access to anything. He still needs to build the mechanized regiment headquarters if he wanted to have access to the uh, to the King Tiger, uh, which he won't. Sherbins back at the base is still doing a lot of damage. We see the, uh, the conscripts being uh, able to repair because they have the uh, conscript repair kit. Helping out with the Sherman that lost his gun. It has recovered its gun. Shots continue to fly at the HQ. Both your ideas do get upgraded with the Shrek, so they're gonna be trying to combat against this, uh, these uh, Shermans, but they don't even get a shot off before they are forced to retreat. They do move out of the way, so they're gonna stay alive a little bit. But I think this is game over here for Fortune. Honestly, I, I do think it was game over a, a while ago. Racket the Warfare gets called onto the field, and it looks like Mr. Crow decides that he's actually going to spare Fortune's life. For now, he just needed to finish that, and that's what that was going to be it. Um, as he backs off to capture, or not capture, but catch a Volkswagen your squad on the retreat. Going to be finish, finishing off that squad. That was one of the squads that stole the... Uh... Wow, is it actually going to make it out of there? Huh, it did. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter too. Oh, never mind. It does matter. Okay. So, the uh, Racket the Warfers now moving back out. Uh, back out, I should say. Looks like a Storm Pile squad is being built to try to uh, repair the HQ. 
But we still have four Shermans on the field, so Crow is kind of just toying with him now. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that Fortune lost the game that or, or very early on. Just the fact of losing two Volks Grenadier squats and giving your opponent a Shrek. And, of course, costing <laughs> that being the cost of him losing a uh, the, the cool wagon. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he really wasn't able to recover that much from there. I mean, honestly, he just managed to make a bit of a pushback because uh, Kuro was simply waiting for the Shermans. I mean, right now, yeah, like you can see here, it's kind of like a fucking cat playing with a mouse. He's just <laughs> patting him around, like batting him around with his, with his Sherman claws and uh, killing off his troops, you know, here and there. And keep uh, allowing him to stay alive. Because, yeah, I mean, like, even if he had lost the Shermans, the HQ was almost down. He, she just needed, he just needed to finish it off, and that's it. He was going to be able to finish it off before the uh, Shreks and anything were going to be able to do much. So Racket and Warfer over here on the right hand side is killed. We have another one over here. Uh, Racket and Warfer, Racket and Warfer, Racket and Warfer. So yeah, the Racket and Warfer's not really being able to keep up against the sheer amount of Shermans. Conscripts capturing, repairing down south as the Shermans just move along gleefully around the field. I mean, Fortune knows that he can't really do much about this, so he's just sitting back at base. Fortunately for him, uh, <laughs> fortune, literally, <laughs> get it? Anyways, uh, fortunately for him, he is, um, he, not he, uh, Crow is actually allowing him to stay alive and, uh, and have some resources. We see another racket and war for getting stolen <laughs> over here on the right hand side. Um, as this, uh, fuel has not been taken, you know, points are not being taken that quickly because, well, Crow doesn't have a lot of infantry anymore. He still has a good amount. That's three conscripts. I mean, a fourth one now with the Racket Warfare, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much, does it? Let's see, supply drops. This gives him, uh, fuel for the, uh... For the munitions. Still remember this one from the Airborne Company where it, uh, it also dropped MGs and mortars. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Fortune selecting his doctrine, going for the Elite Armored Doctrine, calls in the Storm Tiger, hoping that that is going to be the be all and all of his situation. But I mean, come on. <laughs> Storm Tiger is not going to be able to take out four Shermans in one shot. And uh, I'm actually even doubtful it can take a Sherman out. We'll see. But, I mean, Fortune really didn't have access to anything. Because, yeah, he lost his building. So, really, the only thing he could do here is go for the Mechanized Regiment Headquarters. Uh, which could give him Pumas to try and fight the Shermans. But the Shermans wouldn't help. And then maybe go for the King Tiger. But he is a long ways off of the resources to be even be able to consider doing that. Uh, really, what he needed to have done. I mean, not that he didn't do it because of a mistake. But... Like, if he wanted to be alive here, <laughs> what he needed to have been able to do is uh, field uh, Panther from his Juara uh, Panzer headquarters. But he was starved for resources for the entire game, and we're just sitting here waiting for the game to end. I'm assuming the game will end once the Storm Tiger goes down. 106 points are left for Fortune. He's currently triple capped, so he is going to be bleeding very quickly. We shall see if that is uh, what happens. <laughs> Sherman's just sitting around. Conscripts continue to move forward. And yeah, I mean, Fortune, pretty um, passive, pretty shy at this point right now. He doesn't want to push too far forward and get himself killed. One shot versus five tanks. Good luck, <laughs> says Mr. Go. <laughs> so yeah, he uh, spotted the, uh, the Storm Tiger. Here comes the Sherman's. And there goes the shot. Boom! Wow, that was actually pretty good. Manages to kill one of the Shermans, uh, stun, and kind of disable the uh, turret of one of the others. But of course, the Storm Tiger is going to go down. The Racket and Warfare is not really be being able to pull their own weight here. As they just get eliminated back and forth. Racket and Warfare turning themselves around. The Storm Tiger goes down as we all expected it would. Back at the Warfers may be able to finish off another Sherman as they're currently aiming down the sights on this one. Nope, getting themselves killed very quickly. They go down, and three Shermans still stay alive as the conscripts just continue to uh, 
Capture territory. Hover soldat then forced to retreat. Rear armor hits on this Sherman as the racket and warfare gets recovered. More shots gonna fly at it, but it doesn't even manage to get a shot off on it as the racket and warfare is just unable to position itself. And Crow does give him the nice shot as, yeah, it was actually pretty good. Managed to kill one and uh, did a decent amount of damage to the others for uh, consequently getting two uh, kills in total. Storm Pile is going to be recovering those racket and warfers <laughs> as they uh, they just want to get some resources back. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. Do they actually get resources from that? Didn't get the pop up there. I guess I'd have to double check. Uh, the uh, the half track moving around in the center of the map is just going to be getting killed. <laughs> Didn't go much up. Yeah, that is kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's not an AT gun, which is the problem. The racket and warfare has like a trade off. It's uh, uh, a unit that can retreat, which makes it you know kind of easier, quote unquote, to get it away. But yeah, that's this is exactly what uh, Chris was saying. It gets no cover bonus because. The uh, the, eight, the other AT guns they have that big you know shield in front of them which technically gives the squad a uh, heavy cover bonus uh, you know when they're behind it which is why you know a frontal assault on an AT gun usually doesn't work you know because because of the cover because it makes it harder to hit the guys behind uh, with the racket and warfare you sacrifice that for the ability to both garrison buildings and retreat the uh, the weapon you know. And get that uh, defensive bonus, but uh, but yeah, like when you go into a situation like this where you have a lot of a lot of tanks, well, this doesn't work, right? So victory points down to one. Last tick brings the end of the game, and that is all she wrote. <laughs> so at least there was an entertaining little explosion there <laughs> caused by the Storm Tiger. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.